what you're going to sound like. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. You are listening to Whistle Radio. We're in the Hockey Talk studios, and I'm your host, Mike Humphreys, on Hockey Talk. CIWS 102.7 Whistle Radio. Or check us out via your internet on your computer or smart smartphone at whistleradio.ca, the home and the voice of your Stobel Spirit Junior A Hockey Club. Our special guest today is not only a son, a father, a husband, a pro hockey player, he played on the 1967 Stanley Cup champions, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the one, the only, Mr. Robert Neal, Bob Boomer Bond. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. That was, that was quite an introduction. I don't think I've heard that one for a while. <laughs> no. Well, that's what I was going to ask you now. Do you prefer to be called Bob, Bobby, Robert, or you just want to be called? <laughs> <laughs> I've been called many other things. <laughs> but uh, and if my mother was here, she'd say Robert. Okay. Uh, but uh, no, everybody calls me Bob or Bobby, so that I, I, I don't really mind. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, Bobby is the one I remember as a youngster watching you play, wearing number 21. Well, let's go with that one. Then. Okay, that's great. I appreciate that. Now, Bobby, is, or Bobby, here I am saying it, but I'm calling you Bob now. Um, are you still a big fan of the game? I think I'm uh, still a big fan. I, I don't watch as much. I'm not a good watcher. I have never have been. And I've always been a participator, and, uh, and that's part of my problem when I left the game is... Uh, I could never play old timers because I was too serious about the game. There's only one way to play it, and that's uh, and that was going 110 percent. And uh, I always said it was uh, if you don't give 110 uh, percent, why play? And yeah. the, you know there's going to be games that you're not going to be able to give it, but uh, that was my attitude that you had to give 110 percent every game you played, and and that's the way I live life too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's great. Um, now, when you were growing up, um, let's start off with, where were you born? I was born in Lanigan, Saskatchewan, which I call it the potash capital of the world now. <laughs> and, uh, but it was a small little town at that time. In uh, 1936, uh, there was only 250 people and that little whistle stop on, yeah. was on the CN line. And, uh, and now it's a huge mining town. There's about 6,000 and mm -hmm. uh, there's Bobby Bond Way, which is a, wow. a street named after me. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I know it's there. And right. the, the governor general told me that, that the street was there. Oh, so, wow. Anyways, uh, and she was a very nice lady, and uh, her best friend happens to be Pamela Wallen. So, oh. uh, so <laughs> Pamela's making, and Pamela was always one of my favorite ladies. And, right. Uh, and uh, so, anyways, uh, she's Pam, making headlines. These she's days. making headlines, and uh, I feel for her that she's. Uh, it's not the headlines she would really want. No, no, that's a uh, well. There's a lot of uh, political things going on in the city of Toronto these oh, days yeah, no. as well, which aren't. Uh, you know, everyone's got their opinion, I guess, but yeah. uh, we'll leave that to the, the politicians <laughs> to deal with. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, growing up in in a, in a small town like that, um, obviously back in that day, you had been listening to any hockey on the yeah. radio. Well, I, I really didn't grow up there because I we moved to Toronto quite young. My, oh, okay. My parents, uh, my dad rode the rails to Toronto, okay. and uh, he was a mechanic by trade, and. Uh, we came and uh, my mom and I came in 69 or 39. 39, okay. <laughs> and uh, we lived in the upper, well, the beaches, which was on Kenilworth uh, Boulevard and uh, in the in the beaches. And uh, 252, I can remember all my addresses. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> and, uh, and I went to uh, a public school at... Uh, there and uh, in that area, and then I uh, uh, we ended up in Birchcliff, which was okay. uh, where that Scarborough, yeah, Scarborough, that Road, doesn't it? right? Yeah. yeah, where Scarborough Arena is. Yes, and uh, and that's where I played my first hockey was uh, um, with uh, Birchcliff uh, Baptist was the first uh, Baptist church I played for, mm -hmm. and then uh, George Kitchen, who was uh, my first real coach. Uh, and he was at Birchmount Baptist, and uh, okay. and he recruited me. He wanted me at, at a very young age, right. <laughs> for whatever reason. How, how old would so, that have been, Bob? I would have been about six. Right. Yeah, six. Uh, 
Yeah, I was six, I think, when I, so I, got, I played. So you saw play. something in you back then, uh, did he? Well, he says he did, and uh, <laughs> he takes credit <laughs> um, for a long time. George is gone now, but uh, in uh, my uh, public school uh, principal, Lauren Weidman, who was a friend, and they're the Weidmans, as you know, yes. are, are very prominent in the in Stowville, and uh, it's all part of the same family. And, right. And Lauren used to trap up in that area, and as uh, in his off uh, from the the public school when he had a, his time off, he used to do a lot of trapping, you know, at the yeah. and uh, so he was a fascinating guy and a, a great athlete. He was a ball player and all that stuff, and um, so he saw something in me, obviously, and uh, and he could he used to put his hand up and. You know, it would be a nickel, five fingers, and if you caught the ball, then he'd hit fly balls out. And he said this little bugger used to come scooting in from nowhere mm -hmm. and catch the ball on, even on the senior kids. And uh, right. So I used to just want that baseball so bad. <laughs> and part of I think I won the nickel more. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be a but, fair bit of money back right. that Oh, day. yeah, no. So, uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, that, he remembered that. And Lauren, we talked about that right up till he died. Wow. And, um, and he lived a long life. And uh, But uh, he, he was another one that was very instrumental in my life in those early days. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we, I had my own hockey team by the time I was nine years old, and I was the uh, coach, manager, and I bring, uh, hustled to get the. Our, you put your own team together. Yeah, your buddies and and friends, we all, we kids only had well, we only have six players. We played yeah. the whole game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was one of those funny games, you yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> but I I arranged for the uh, the socks and sweaters and wow and uh, and get that all done, and so that. Uh, uh, we'd have our, our nice socks and sweaters, and, and a lot of kids were pretty motley in those days. Yeah. You know, they didn't have proper sweaters, but we always had proper sweaters, and we ended up playing against Lake Marlboro's, the minor midgets wow. and Panhams and stuff like that, right. and they whipped the jumpings out of us, <laughs> but, but we'd make them pay the price. All right. <laughs> it was a pretty physical game back then, I guess, for you. It was, well, and Bobby Haggard, who was our trainer, and he played with the Detroit a uh, minor league team at that time in Toronto, and uh, he, he said I broke his arm, and he says, you were one tough son of a gun, he says. <laughs> and, and he says he used to drive us all crazy, you know, because I, we never went off the ice, and of course we were always <laughs> tired. <laughs> but we were in, in pretty good shape, too, for, yeah. that, for that age. Well, nowadays yeah. they play, what, 45 seconds? Right, no, no. <laughs> well, well, we and we played everything. Lauren was a good, you know, he... He, he just, uh, we had baseball, uh, uh, fastball, and uh, and then I played soccer. And then when we went to high school, I was a good football player. So uh, I, I really loved all the sports. The only thing I couldn't do was swim. No? <laughs> I'm not a good swimmer. I can't float. No? I'm better underwater. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but you still yeah. swim. You go in the pools. Or oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. But uh, anyways... Uh, Generally, you know, we played in the old Toronto Brickyards uh, during the winter. Right. It used to freeze over at off uh, just east of Victoria Park. Right. And uh, that's where we play on the ponds. Mm -hmm. And played a lot of street hockey on Queensbury Avenue. And all my boyhood friends, I still got uh, uh, a few of them still alive. And, yeah. uh, and we're all creeping up at the between the 75 and 85 yeah. and uh, and we played every every day and uh, you know till the, the pond froze and then we'd be and what did you use as a did you use a puck or yeah in the old days we used the horse balls you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so my but dad that, used to always tell me yeah. I don't know why you guys worry about getting a ball or a yeah. tennis ball or whatever right you no know, no just no. a good old horseman or right no no <laughs> that but that and, and many times we'd have a ball and play ball hockey, and uh, you know we had tennis balls. They weren't as good as they are now, but uh, you know we play with tennis balls. We play with whatever we had, and yeah. uh, and uh, and it wasn't that we, you know, for the sticks of the day, you know they were like two by fours anyways. You yeah. Know, so it didn't, and 
you know, most of our parents all complained if we broke our stick. Mm-hmm. You know, and what, what do you think you do? And you know, and my dad would never figure that one out. Uh, he, because he never really, they they had very little time for extracurricular activities like watching their son or daughter play sports. Mm-hmm. You know, my dad never watched me, and uh, the only thing I, we did together was fish. Yeah. And, uh, and out west, when we used to go every summer and hunting, I I learned to shoot a rifle when I was about six years old. And, mm-hmm. and uh, he'd give me one shell, and he says, uh, you get one shell, so don't waste it. <laughs> 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 you know, so no, that's how that's how you were taught. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But uh, that wasn't all bad. No. And uh, because you didn't waste that one shell. No, and you knew you it did, too. You, that's right. There was no going, come on, Dad, give me another one. It's no, like, no, nah, that's not going to happen. No, no, no. <laughs> you're not going to get another one. Maybe yeah. tomorrow you might get another one. Right. But then there'd be double the pressure back. So, <laughs> so I think that was a good way to learn about pressure. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Everybody, we're, you're on listening to CIWS 102.7 Whistle Radio. You can check us out on the website at whistleradio.ca. And we have a special guest here this afternoon, um, somebody who is uh, pretty famous in this community and uh, in uh, in Canada and in hockey in general. And I'm privileged to say we have uh, Mr. Bob Bond, as I want to refer to him as Bobby, because that's what I grew up with. So, um, Bob, so we were talking about uh, obviously your childhood playing um, and and being. Um, um, played against by the Marlboros back in the day. Yes. I think at one point you ended up playing for them, didn't you, a little bit later on in your uh, career? Yes. In your uh, young career, I should say. Yeah. You know, <laughs> no, well, that, uh, and actually it was Mike Nicolock who go, uh, we got the opportunity, and uh, he was scouted by Bob Davidson, the head of scouting for Maple Leafs at that time. And uh, so Mike and I were good ball players, football players, and uh, and uh, he said, well, I won't go unless you uh, bring Bob Bond. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I, I had my, my car license very young. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and my, my dad, of course, we, he had a wonderful business. And uh, so I had access to a, a nice car so I could drive Mike to practice and mm-hmm. I could go to practice. Yeah. So, so anyways, that was one of the reasons. But... We also played in the Big Six, which was in the east end of Toronto at Scarborough Arena. Right. And uh, and it was I always played with older bo- fellows at at a very young age, and mm-hmm. you know starting from very young. And so when I got had this opportunity, Mike and I both went to Western Dukes and tried out for them. And Mike made the team, and they said, "Well, go back and play with our minor midgets." We got a whole bunch of Classic players like Bobby Nevin and and uh, all the way. There's 14 guys on that minor midget team that all turned pro. Wow! So it was a it was a loaded team. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, that's going backwards in my mind, you mm-hmm. know. And I and I said, well, just go and play a few games with them to see what it's like and see how you do. So I went and played uh, I think three games or four games with them, and uh, they said, well, we'd like you to go up and play defense with Weston Dukes for a couple of games and see how you make out up there. So anyways, I played on a weekend with Mike and Weston and uh, I played the two games on the weekend and uh, they said, well, we'd like you to go to uh, Toronto Marlboros next weekend. Uh, Eric Nesterinko was turning pro and we got a spot open would you like to try and play with the junior A's? So at that time, I was only about a 15-year-old. So mm-hmm. anyways, uh, the way I went to uh, Toronto Marlboros, and Jack Biondo was my partner at that time, and uh, and he was a wonderful lacrosse player, like a world-class lacrosse player. And uh, and uh, he was my mentor, became my mentor for junior hockey. And, uh, Anyways, and my big brother <laughs> looked after me. But anyways, I, I played with Marlboros and never went back. And uh, so I, I was very young, and then I went to my first Leaf training camp the next year. At and 16? I was at 16 years old. Wow. So, uh, and uh, that was in St. Catharines, and uh, Jimmy Morrison and uh, Hank Cahan were my roommates. Uh-huh. Uh, and I thought I made the team that 
<laughs> I, I hit Bill Bariga so hard he was out for two days. <laughs> oh, boy. I had a concussion, and, uh, and oh, Bill, I felt so bad for him because he was a journeyman, and you know, and the family, you know, we needed to play hockey. And, yeah. Uh, but uh, I had this little cut on my cheek here. His, his teeth marks were, his head went off my my head, and, and he ended up on laying on the ice, and he, he didn't really come out of the for about two or three days, so it oh. was it wasn't one of the nice things, but that that set the tone for who I was, yes. and, and everybody started to notice who I was after that. So is that where it, Boomer came from? That's where the Boomer came from. Yeah. It, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. As some of the articles I read to uh, prepare some of my questions for today um, were kind of geared around that you were a real solid, hard hitting. But fair, yeah. Player. No, well, somebody said that last night. There was a, a great hip check last night in, in the hockey game with um, Minnesota and uh, and Ottawa, and it, it was as good as it gets. And it, it was just a, just one of those old fashioned hip checks, yeah. and, uh, like we used to do. And uh, and it was he got the the other kid going airborne, and uh, <laughs> and, and that was. But you know, neither of them were hurt, and uh, and that's always nice when somebody doesn't get hurt. But it's nice to see a nice clean check and and uh, timing. Everything had to be perfect to do it. Yeah. And uh, that move is all premeditated, by the way. <laughs> you have to do, know what you're doing. When you were younger, did they have a nickname for you when you were a youngster, or did was Boomer kind of one of the ones? Or uh, no, I, that came up and that. That wasn't. That really wasn't from my hitting. I was always nervous before the game, mm -hmm. and my stomach act, acted up, so it was uh, passing wind. <laughs> 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 but okay. uh, but uh, anyways, that that that's where Bomer came from, and uh, and uh, a lot of people wanted to make it the other way, but it, it really. And of course, uh, Boom Boom Jeffrey on yeah. was the first one to have it. So then. I did have a hard shot at one point, but then I had a lot of elbow problems, and and uh, so then uh, I I never did shoot the puck as hard after I had my problems with my elbows. So. Right. But uh, and that wasn't from hitting guys with my elbows, <laughs> like some other guys I know, Gordy Howe, for instance. <laughs> now, have you have you had a good rapport with some of the old boys over the years, like a guy like Gordy? Oh, I've you know we lived uh, in Detroit and played there for two years, and that was exciting to play with Gord for two years. Yeah, he, he to me is one of the great athletes of our time and our generation, and uh, and still today. And I, I was so happy to see Bobby Orr. Yeah, I watched an interview in Albany, New York, two weeks ago, and uh, it was on the um, the public television station. Yes. And this fellow did a terrific job with Bobby, and uh, uh, and he said Gordy Howe was by far the best athlete that he had ever seen, mm -hmm. and and best hockey player. And yeah. uh, you know he was so far ahead of, uh, you know everybody talks about the great one, sure. Wayne. And Wayne was a good hockey player, but just still nowhere close to the realm. And play in the competition that you know we had to play in early. Yeah. You know the the competition from when winning came in and say from seventy five to ninety five was, you know, a bit wishy. And I I know some of the current play, or the players that played in that area are always upset with me because I I do say that, but I'm saying it wasn't their fault. No. You know that that's that's how they filled the league, and that's yeah, you know, down. it was watered down, and uh, and and uh, you can't. It's not something I think that you can really teach. You know how I see these young hockey players today, and and they're wonderful. You know we're watching kids do things that, you know, we would have loved to have done. Yeah. You know, but Gordy did all those things. That, you know, back then. Yeah. You know, Carl Brewer did all those things. Orr did all those things. But if you did those things, you you were sometimes, you know, uh, paid for in other ways by being called a show off or, you know, I, I say bullied, you're, you're smart ass. 
you know, if the manager saw you do it. Yeah. You know, Jack Adams, he wouldn't, you know, and that's one of the great stories when Jack Adams grabbed Gordy's stick and he says, look at a man's stick, you know. Yeah. He was talking about all these guys were having short sticks. Right. Well, he looked. <laughs> they measured Gordy's stick against the other guys, and Gord's is six inches shorter. <laughs> oh, Adams turned around and walked. <laughs> but that's the only way Gordy could get it to, you know, he used a high lie to get the stick in between his feet, and he could bring the puck right up, you yeah. know. Where everybody, you know, we were struggling with those pieces of lumber that, Oh, Con Smythe used to make it, <laughs> but he didn't know we spent hours whittling on them down in the old Tommy Naylor skate shop, you know, right. to, to make the stick lighter and make it more usable. And that's what, that's how we got around it. Yeah. You know, Stan Makita, you know, he spent hours of shaping his blade. You yeah. know, that's how he got, and that Bobby Hall, you know, they, 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 the they, and it, that's how they got their shots. And that's how the evolution changed, yeah. the skates. You know, the, Tommy Naylor, who was the, the great pioneer in the skates, uh, he, he was the one that he said, all oh, these new skates aren't going to make it, you know. Yeah. I said, Tom, they're better. I can, <laughs> I can skate faster, I can turn sharper, and I can stop better on, on these new skates than the old skates. Yeah. And you know that's a great asset for these young hockey players to have have those type of boots. Mm -hmm. It's the, you know it's a you know in the old days I never tightened my skates up at all. They're, mine were totally loose, and they were just like a, a slipper to me. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's the way I liked them. Well now they're like ski boots. Yes. You know they're just very tight, and uh, so there's nowhere to go. So I think that's why we're seeing if there is a bad heel injury or leg injury, that's what's happening because they're not giving. And um, and and I think that that won't change. They're they're just going to get I say better, I say but maybe the, maybe they'll go a little shorter in the boot. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but uh, what you're seeing is everybody is very strong except some of the big boys are getting knocked down awfully easy, and uh, we have a grandson that's six foot three, and and he doesn't get knocked down, but he's got size fourteen feet, so that's what I say <laughs> makes up for. But uh, but anyways, if you uh, that's the only area you don't see Crosby getting knocked off his feet. Stamkos too often, other than he just broke his leg. But I'm just saying, those guys are very seldom ever knocked down. Their mm -hmm. their bounces. Just extraordinary, yeah. and uh, and uh, and Overton, he can shoot us <laughs> on one leg or five legs. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, but uh, you know, he he's just such a gregarious hockey player, mm -hmm. and fun to watch. And, yeah. You know. Well, Bob, we're gonna have to cut you off, but we're gonna have you back. <laughs> and I, I thank you very much for your time this morning. Again, we will have you back right after this when we re, uh, we do another uh, a report with you. So thank you very much for your time this morning, and uh, we'll talk to you very soon. Oh, you're welcome, Mike, and any time, and uh, it's fun. I'm sorry I, I get a, a little long-winded, and I That's I, fine. I That's what this is all about. People yeah. love to hear from you. Yeah, no, I enjoy it, and uh, if we can ever help somewhere, that's what I like. Just uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, who's more fun than people but more people, so uh, keep doing a good job and that you're doing, Mike, and that, that's what it's all about is communications and talking to people. Thanks, Bob. We'll see you shortly. Good.